In this video, we're going to talk about Simple GUI. Simple GUI is the Python module and code sculptor that allows us to build interactive applications. This is really the magic in code sculptor. Without it, we couldn't build these interesting games that we're going to be able to build in this class. Now, another way I could have titled this is frustrations over my summer vacation. So I told you that I spent my summer building Code Sculptor. Well, a lot of that was building Simple GUI. And Simple GUI is actually written in JavaScript, allowing us to use the web browser in the way that we are. Now, this is great for you. It sucked for me. Why? Well, JavaScript is just a terrible language. There is a good reason why we're teaching this class in Python and not JavaScript. All right. With that, I want to walk you through some simple GUI applications. I want to show you how to find out more about simple GUI and get you started. First, I just want to walk you through the example application at codesculptor.org. So when you first go to the site, this is what you see. And this is a very basic, simple GUI program. So let's run it. When we run it, another window pops up. This I'm going to call this window the frame. And the frame has a couple of different areas to it. First, we have the control area. And the control area is where we have buttons, text inputs, and there are even text labels that allow you to print status information from your application back to the frame. Okay, so in this application, there's just this one button that says click me. So let's click it. And you'll notice over on the right hand side, which is the canvas, the message changed from welcome to good job. Now the canvas is where all the interesting things are going to happen in your program. This is where we can draw images, shapes, text, and we can even respond to keyboard and mouse events over in the canvas. So the canvas is the interesting part of the frame. And then the final area of the frame is the status area. The status area gives us feedback about keyboard and mouse events that happen in the canvas, and this is critical to making debugging a little bit simpler in Simple GUI. Okay? So now you've seen a basic application in its elements. So this simple application actually has two event handlers. It has the click handler that's registered to execute in response to button presses. And it has a draw handler that's registered with the frame to actually draw the canvas. Okay, and what the click handler does is it simply changes the message that's going to be drawn, and the draw handler draws that message. So how do I learn more about how all this works? Well, there's a nice link over here to documentation. We should use it. Okay, the documentation has three tabs, simple GUI, Python, and the editor. We're going to focus on simple GUI today. Okay, the frame only has a few different things you can do to it. You can create a frame. You can set the background color of the frame so it doesn't always have to be black. And then you can start the frame. If you don't actually call frame.start here, okay, then the frame is never going to actually do anything. It's not going to work and you're not going to have any interactivity. There are also a bunch of control objects in Simple GUI. As I said, you can have buttons, text inputs, and text labels in the control area. And this talks about how to register their, hand, their handlers and how to actually write a, or create a text label and so on. Right? Also, the canvas, I can register event handlers to respond to key presses, key releases, mouse button clicks, mouse, mouse dragging events. Okay? I can also change the text labels that I created before. The canvas is the most interesting part. I can do a lot of stuff to the canvas. I need to set a draw handler if I actually want to draw anything into the canvas. And that draw handler can then draw text, lines, li multi-lines or polylines, polygons, circles, and you can even draw images into the canvas. Okay. We've seen timers before. I can simply create a timer, but I have to start it before it does anything. I can also stop a timer if I don't want it to keep going anymore. Right? I'm going to ignore images for the moment because we actually need to get a working canvas before we can do images, and that's for a little later in the course. And we can also do sounds. Now, sounds we're not going to use for quite a while in the course, so I'm also going to ignore that. All right? But that's the basics of the simple GUI. All right, now I want to talk about the program structure that we are going to advocate you use for simple GUI programs. And if you follow this structure, we think that your programs are going to, you're going to find that your simple GUI programs are easier to write. And it's basically a seven step process. First, you should define your globals. This is basically the state in your program. Okay, so the message variable was a global variable in the example program that was read by the draw handler and written by the button handler. Okay, after that, you define any helper functions that you need for your program. 
okay? Your helper functions now are things that perhaps you need to use in more than one event handler. So they're not event handlers, rather they're functions that are used to help event handlers accomplish a particular task. All right. Then I'm going to define any classes that I need in my program. And we have not talk about cla I talked about classes. We're going to get to that later in the course. All right. I just want to put it here as a placeholder so that when you do see them, you know where they should go. And at this point, we're now ready to define our event handlers. Okay, and by doing it this way, your event handlers now can easily use the globals, helper functions, and classes that you've defined in your program. Okay, at that point, we're now ready to create a frame. And once we have our frame, we can register all of the event handlers that we need. Okay. And finally, all we have to do is start our frame and any timers that we have in the program. Okay. All right. Now, by following this seven-step process, we think that your programs will e be easier to write, maintain, and understand. And if you and everyone else in the class follows this seven-step process, you'll also be able to understand other people's programs when you see them. Okay? So, please, we strongly recommend that you do follow this process. You use this as a checklist. You look at your programs and you go down the, the list and you either say, hey, I have my globals or I don't need any in this, this program. I have my helper functions or I don't need any, and so on. And if you do that, you will have a much easier time at generating correct, working, simple GUI programs. Okay, let's use this structure to write a simple GUI program. Here I have the template. Right, the first thing that I'm going to do is make sure that I import the simple GUI module. If I don't import the simple GUI module, I can't do any of this. Right? Now, we're going to define a global variable. Let's define a global variable called counter, and let's initialize it to zero. Next, I want to define any helper functions I might have. I don't actually need a helper function for this program, but I'm going to define one anyway. This helper function is simply going to increment that global counter variable. Okay. Now I want to define an event handler. I'm going to call it tick again because I'm going to run it on a timer. I'm going to call increment and then I'm going to print counter. All right. So here we go. I have my helper function. I have my event handler. Let's run our program. Hmm. Nothing happens. All right. Well, we knew that, right? Uh, nothing's going to happen until we actually register the event handler and start the timer and so on. Okay. So let's create a frame. Now to create a frame, I call simple GUI .create frame. Okay. Oops. Okay, now I have a frame. Let's register my event handler. I'm going to create a timer. I want it to run every second and I want it to run the tick handler. Okay. Now am I ready to run? Let's try it. Well, a frame popped up, but nothing's actually printing over here. The frame background is white. This is an indication that I forgot to start everything, which also should have been obvious because of following the program structure, I have my nice little comment here. I didn't follow my checklist. So let's do frame.start, timer.start. Okay, now my program should work, I hope. And here we go. Oh, okay. So I got an exception. Name error, name increment is not defined because I meant increment. Okay, let's fix that. Run it again. Great. Now ticks are happening over here. I have my frame. The canvas background is actually black. Everything seems to be working. Now this isn't that great of a program because I don't actually need the frame, right? Things are just ticking along over here on the right-hand side. Let's fix that. Okay, well, it might still ticking. I better reset here. Okay, let's add a button. frame.add button and let's call it click me and let's register it with the tick event handler. Now this is not normally what you would do. You do not usually register the same handler with multiple events. But 
for this illustration purposes, I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. So now I run over here and you can see that I'm ticking along here once per second, but now I have this button. And so I can click the button and I can make it print faster. So basically I can make it go faster than once per second by clicking. Okay. And that should make sense, right? Because when I click, it's calling the tick event handler, which increments the counter and then prints it. Okay. So things will print faster. All right. Now that's not really all that interesting. Let's instead register a function called button press. And let's make this reset the counter to zero. Okay, so what's going to happen now? Again, I have my frame. Things are ticking along nicely over here. When I click it now, it resets the counter. So the counter goes back to zero, and next time the tick handler happens, it increments it, and so it prints one and keeps going. And so I can reset it as much as I would like with this. Now that's a much more interesting program. I think Simple GUI was definitely worth the effort that it took to build it. Simple GUI is one of the aspects of Code Sculptor that just makes it so much fun to use. I hope that as the class goes on, you'll, you'll agree with me on that one. Right? Even now, you should be able to go through the example programs that we talked about, go through the documentation, and I think you can build some neat little Simple GUI programs. So enjoy.